Hi dear students today i am going to revise vector algebra it is so beneficial for uh, need to je aspirants in minimum time we can go through the very important points and the problematic situations of the section especially vector we know the physical quantity means the measurable quantities are classified into vectors and scalars we know the vectors means the physical quantities are having magnitude and directions with the examples as you know the scalars have magnitude only the good examples like mass capacitance potential time energy etc in simple we can deal with the 12 types of vectors each one are very important one the first two in one or two years for uh, all into pmt now said to be neat exam and also for j main they are asking the questions which of the following are said to be polar vectors or active axial vectors like that and keep in mind the polar vectors means the vectors acting along the direction of motion of a body with a point of application and we can give the examples like uh, uh, displacement velocity acceleration force or the vectors in relation with the linear motion are said to be polar vectors axial vectors axial vectors means the vectors are acting along the axis of it is nothing but belongs to circular motion or a rotational motion we can quote the examples the angular displacement angular velocity angular acceleration torque angular momentum the best examples the egg physical quantities in circular motion you know the equal vectors means the two vectors got the same magnitude and same direction and keep in mind the angle of orientation as 0 degree the negative vectors the two vectors got the same magnitude but opposite direction the parallel vectors may they are said to be equal vectors also but for parallel vectors in sometimes the magnitude need not be equal anti parallel means they are acting in opposite direction collinear vectors you know the vector is acting along a line sometimes such a vector has got same magnitude sometimes not but the angle of orientation must be zero or 180 that is very important you know the coplanar vectors that means the vectors acting in a plane their orientation may be from 0 to 180 degree null or zero vector we can quote a best example if a body moves through the circumference of a circle we can quote it's a displacement it becomes zero if you if the particle takes its original position so there it is the null vector magnitude is zero the very important point the last three the unit vector position vector and displacement vector the unit vector you know the vector used to represent the direction of a vector that is denoted as a cap that is a unit vector along a and hence it is it can be easily find out as vector a division by modulus of vector a and keep in mind the orthogonal unit vectors the vectors along x y and z axis we quote it as i cap j cap and k cap next one the position vector the location vector in order to locate in order to represent the location of a point with respect to origin we represent the position vector it is denoted as vector r 
suppose here the final point p got the coordinate x y z we can represent that vector in rectangular component form as x i plus y j plus z k and keep in mind here x y z are the components of vector r along x y and z or the coordinates its magnitude can be simply represented as root of x square plus y square plus z square if a particle move from one point to another the initial got the coordinate as r1 position vector as r1 the final one with the position vector as r2 then the displacement vector can be represented as x2 minus x1 into y plus y2 minus y1 into j and z2 minus z1 into k these are the sum of the basic concept with the vector algebra then we can move to the next very important concept see a vector is not changed that is a very important concept in which what are the situations where the vector is not changed and keep in mind if the frame of reference is translated or rotated that vector is not changed but its components may change keep in mind if it is rotated through an angle of 360 degree or if it is a slid parallel to itself so in vector algebra we have to do three important processes its addition subtraction and multiplication processes at first we can think about the addition process we have to learn three important laws the first one the triangle law of vector addition the second one the parallelogram law of vector addition and the third one the polygon law of vector addition the triangle law said as you know if we are with the two vectors say vector a and vector b at first we have to represent them as the first two sides of a triangle in one order you know one order means the end to point of the one vector should be the initial point of the other then the resultant is nothing but the third side with the reverse order similarly and another law is there that is a parallelogram law of vector addition so there we have it to represent the two vectors a and b as the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram the first step is to complete the parallelogram then the resultant is nothing but the diagonal but in the both the cases if you look in the parallelogram law of vector addition you can represent this as a if it is b then this must be b also and hence we can say a and b are in one order then the resultant is nothing but the diagonal that means the triangle of vector addition is another interpretation of parallelogram law of vector addition but keep in mind the very important concept here how we can find the resultant with a simple but very important relation as root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta and we can say the resultant makes an angle at an angle say alpha with respect to one of the vector a then it can be represented as b sin theta by a plus b cos theta so keep in memory the very important two relations the polygon law of vector addition you know all the vectors should be expressed as the sides of the polygon in one order then the resultant is given by the last side with the reverse order and hence the resultant can be represented as vector a plus vector b plus vector c and c some very important examination concepts
see the first point for a closed polygon the resultant is zero so that's a very important point if it is with the n equal sides then each vector makes an angle of 2 pi by n with the preceding vector you can uh, quote it with a simple example if you look if you take just a square you know the four sides are there then we can find that angle as a 2 pi by n as a 2 pi by 4 so it is 90 degree so there is a very good example and to keep in mind our vector addition process of bias the commutative law the associative law and to keep in mind when the resultant to become maximum we know the relation for r is nothing but is equal to root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so theta is the variable there it got the maximum value when theta equal to 0 and it got the minimum value when theta equal to 1 id then keep in mind the resultant should lie in between the sum of their magnitudes and difference between them it is a very important point the next very important point is how many minimum number of vectors needed to result and to become zero and keep in mind if the given vectors got the equal magnitudes two vectors needed but if it is unequal magnitudes three vectors needed but if them are acting in different planes, minimum four vectors are needed to result and to become zero. Then we are with a very, very important concept. If the two vectors got the same magnitude, we can easily find the resultant with the simple formula 2x cos theta by 2. Here you can apply here. If the two magnitudes are equal, our maximum becomes a plus b that means 2a and here we can substitute when theta equal to 0 cos 0 become 1 so 2 into a so very important so look at the very important one question try to solve it maybe the very very important one the sum of magnitudes of two forces acting at a point is 60 newton if the resultant force is 8 newton and its direction is perpendicular to the smaller force then the forces are you can solve it either applying the two relations as r equal to root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta and tan alpha is equal to b sin theta by a plus b cos theta or you can logically just draw the triangle with one of the side as perpendicular to the smaller one then logically you get the answer is 1. A good question, keep in mind. See, the another but important question, two forces, each numerically equal to 10 dimes, are acting as shown in the figure. Then find the resultant of the two vectors. The simple formula with you, and here the magnitudes are equal and hence you can easily find the relation as a 2x cos theta by 2 but keep in mind there is a difference concept is there and reason the angle between them is not 60 degree keep in mind and here it is a a so another vector come this one so the angle between them become 180 minus 60 keep in mind the subtraction of vectors and keep in mind the subtraction means we can er express it as the addition process. In order to subtract B from A, we can represent it as A minus B or can be written as A plus minus B. So that is the structure. At first we have to find what is the minus B. Then we have to add with the A. So that is the resultant. And you get the magnitude, you know, the root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cos theta with the resultant angle with respect to vector a that is uh, here it is given as a tan beta 
that is equal to b sin theta by a minus b cos theta. And keep in mind, it does not obey the commutative and associative laws. But the another problem solving technique, and keep in mind, if the two got the same magnitude, then the modulus of a minus b got 2x sine theta by 2. I think the subtraction of vectors got more applications. We can discuss uh, that rain man problem, boat river problem, the relative velocity concept etc. are belongs to this uh, subtraction of vectors. So it may be the very important topic. See one sample question. A vector of length L is turned through an angle theta about its tail. Then what is the change in the position vector of its head? You can give the answer so quickly. It is a 2L sine theta by 2. Another very important concept. The rectangular splitting. And suppose there is a vector A. It makes an angle. Say theta with respect to x axis then we can split the vector a into two rectangular components one along x axis one along y and that is a cos theta the vertical component as a sin theta and can be written as vector a is equal to a x i plus a y j or equal to a cos theta i plus a sin theta j but keep in mind another another concept if the theta is uh, uh, from the vertical then keep in mind a x become a sin theta and a y become a cos theta. Direction cosines, another very important one. The direction cosines means the angle made by a vector a with respect to x axis, y axis and z axis respectively. Here it is denoted as alpha, beta and gamma. So the direction cosines means cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma. And what do you mean by cos alpha? It is nothing but the adjacent side by the hypotenuse. Here the adjacent side is nothing but ax by a. So cos beta become ay by a and cos gamma become az by a. But these two points are very important. So we can return in terms of the direction cosines. The cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma become 1. And if you substituted for cos square alpha in terms of sine square, you get the value equal to 2. The very important one. Another examination concept to keep in mind. A vector can be split into two rectangular components in a plane, but in space, three components. But a vector can be split not rectangularly to infinite number of components are a very important concept now we can move with the one uh, simple concept one simple question a force is inclined at an angle of 60 degree from the horizontal if the horizontal component of the force is 40 newton calculate the vertical component so we can just use the above concept and uh, we can easily solve. And is we can just uh, uh, think about the multiplication between vector and uh, scalar. And keep in mind, if a vector is multiplied with a positive scalar quantity, the magnitude becomes that times and the direction remains the same. But if it is multiplied with a negative scalar quantity, the direction reverses, but the magnitude becomes that times. If you multiply between two vectors, you keep in mind that depending upon the nature of the product obtained, we are with two types of products, the dot product and cross product. So the very important inside of the vector algebra it got a lot of applications with the one simple example if we just multiply the force under displacement we get work the physical quantity 
but it is said to be a pakka scalar quantity so likewise suppose a and b are with theta orientation we can define to be the dot product a dot b take the value as a b cos theta and keep in mind it got the commutative it obeys the commutative property and another concept it is very very important if a and b and a and b are there we can easily find the angle between them through cos theta take the value as a dot b by modulus of a into modulus of b in case of orthogonal unit vectors i j k we can represent as i dot j equal to j dot k equal to k dot i equal to zero or i dot i equal to j dot j equal to k dot k equal to one and hence we can express if a is given as a x i plus a y j plus a z k similarly if b is given we can find a dot b take the value equal to a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b s and you should revise the geometrical meaning of dot product how we can find the component of one vector along another or projection of vector a on b in scalar form we can represent it is nothing but a cos theta equal to a dot b by modulus of b or vector a dot b cap or in vector form you know the component of a along b and hence we have to multiply with the direction of b that is b cap so vector a dot b cap into b cap a very important concept and we can go through some of the examples throughout the plus 1 and plus 2 the work done the force the kinetic energy the electric flux the magnetic flux the potential energy of an electric dipole when it is placed in an electric field the potential energy of magnetic dipole in a magnetic field are very good examples of dot product you can go with one examination question if a vector a and b are given then find the value of n n so that a is perpendicular to b that means here the dot product cos 90 that should be equal to 0 so we can equate and you get the answer as n is equal to minus 2 the vector product a very important concept the product of time is a vector so if a and b are two vectors with the theta angle of orientation a cross b can be represented as a b sin theta into n cap its magnitude can be represented as a b sin theta and keep in mind it does not follow the commutative law a cross b is equal to minus b cross a and keep in mind the vector product of two vectors is always a vector and is perpendicular to the plane containing a and b see how we can find the a cross b we can use the determinant concept as i j k a x a y a z b x b y b z then we can go through the geometrical application of uh, the cross product the very important three concept if a and b represents the side sides of a parallelogram we can easily find the area by just finding the modulus a cross b if a and b represents the diagonals of the parallelogram then the area is half of modulus a cross b if a and b represents the sides of a triangle again we get the answer half of modulus a cross b keep in mind a lot of examples for a cross product in our plus 1 and plus 2 physics the torque acting on it the angular momentum the velocity under circular motion the torque acting on the electric dipole when it is placed in an electric field when a magnetic dipole is placed in a 
magnetic field the force on a charged particle when it is placed in a magnetic field are very good examples and we can go with the two simple questions if f and r are given how we can find the torque this is a very important question find a unit vector perpendicular to both the vectors a and b you can use the simple concept as the unit vector is nothing but n cap so n cap take the value equal to a cross b by modulus a cross b see the very important some concept if it go through last few years of all india pmt or neat j main exams and these concepts are repeating the very important one how we can find the angle between the two vectors if the modulus of a equal to modulus of b equal to modulus of a plus b equal to modulus of a minus b if modulus of a plus b equal to modulus of a minus b it is a very important question we can solve it to be as a theta equal to 90 degree if the modulus of a plus b equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b if modulus of a minus b is equal to modulus of a minus modulus of b so these are the very important concept please go through it and the next the very very important concept we have to find the relative velocity the velocity of a with respect to b it is defined to be the velocity of a minus velocity of b and velocity of b with respect to a is vb minus va we can go with the different types of questions so please try to solve it and otherwise i can help you so very very important type question i am giving the answers to you. so here the relative velocity in a unit direction in a one dimensional concept the buses a and b are moving in the same direction with the speed 20 and 15 meter per sec respectively find the relative velocity of a with respect to b and the relative velocity of b with respect to b a so we can use easily use that concept another two questions there is a very very important type see delhi is at a distance of 200 km from ampala car a is set out from ampala at a speed of 30 km per hour and car b is set out at the same time from delhi with a speed of 20 km per hour when they will meet each other what is the distance of that uh, meeting from ampala we can easily find that uh, time is nothing but the total distance division by the relative velocity so we can use that concept another very very important even if that question is asked for our neat and iit exams to three boys a b and c are situated at the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side d at t is equal to 0 each of the boys moves with the constant speed v always a always move towards b b towards e and c towards a when and where they meet each other so just to take the very important concept it will meet at the centroid the triangle centroid that is the meeting point you can just to find the displacement between one of the corner and the center that is a 2d by 3b another very important concept rain man problem so you must revise that concept actually we thoroughly we know but you should go through specially that concept and we are with one question you can work work out a man when stand still observes the rain falling vertically when he walks at 4 km per hour he has to hold his umbrella at an angle of 53 degree from the vertical then find the velocity of the rain drops you can just draw the figure and you can use the relative concept relative velocity concept and you can easily solve it another very important concept boat river problem a very 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 important concept keep in mind 
There are two cases are there, the shortest path and the shortest time. And keep in mind, in order to reach the just opposite bank, just opposite bank, he should see at an angle theta from the vertical, from perpendicular. The time taken is the width by root Vm square minus Vr square. But in shortest time, keep in mind, he must move always perpendicular to the river flow. The time taken is width by velocity of the man. So here, two important questions are there. You should done it based on the concept. After revision, a boat moves along the flow of river between two fixed points A and B. It takes T1 time when going downstream and it takes time T2 when going upstream between these two points. What time it will take in still water to cover the distance AB? So you can use these two concepts on the downstream that velocity got the same direction in the upstream that velocity got the opposite direction and you can solve it and you get the answer. And another good but simple question. A 2 km wide river flow flowing with a rate of 5 km per hour. A man can swim in the still water with 10 km per hour. He wants to cross the river along the shortest path. Find one in which direction should he swim and be the crossing time. So by using this concept you can solve it. And a very good question is coming, a very very important type question, you must solve it. The two particles A and B are projected from the ground simultaneously in the directions shown in the figure with initial velocities Va and Vb. They collide after 0.5 second, find out the angle and the distance x. So. If the two are collide in the sense they are with the same vertical displacement and hence by equating that you get the answer. So these are the um, um, regions we have to focus based on this chapter but keep in mind the vector it is not only restricted to the two dimensional motion chapter but all over the plus one and plus two and based on the vector concept you can minimum solve more than 15 questions for need. Maybe more than 10 questions for your J main exams, no doubt at all. So take care. So we can wait for another another chapter. Thank you.